what made to you so special? Nothing. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. Okay, guys, I'm back. Frank Stout, just a guy from Brooklyn, here to give you a new Spider-Man movie franchise ranking. Want to jump right into it, but first little background. I grew up in the 70s, and um, yeah, I'm old. And uh, I grew up collecting Marvel Comics, and my favorite solo hero was Spider-Man. So Spider-Man is a very big deal for me. It always has been. While everybody else is all like Batman, Superman, I'm like, I'm all Spider-Man all the way. I can still remember the cheesy, like, live action TV show that came out. It was pretty bad, but for me, it was like the best show in the world. I couldn't wait for every new episode to come on. Let's get things going. And um, my two rules, as always, number one, spoilers. With the exception of the brand new movie that just came out, Across the Spider-Verse, I, I will probably be giving spoilers. So, hard spoiler warning with the exception of that new movie. Rule number two, as always, this is a favorites list, not a best list. So, the best way that you can converse with me in the comments is by sharing me your list. Kicking things off at number 10 is Spider-Man Far From Home. And this works really good as a funny teen comedy. As an MCU movie, as a Spider-Man movie, not so much. Honestly, the plot is just so ridiculous that I can't, I can't get behind it. Tony Stark, you know, after dying, leaves Peter, a teenager, a pair of tech sunglasses that has the capability to fire nukes at people. We get another villain pissed off at Tony Stark. How many is that now? I, I don't even know. That being said, I find the movie to be watchable. Coming in at number nine is Spider-Man 3. The first of many times that Sony ruins the franchise with its studio interference. They wanted to shoehorn in Venom. Everybody knows the story. It's a shame because it has a really, really great comic book accurate villain in The Sandman who I still to this day I love the sand animations with the, you know with that CGI I really love all that and his fights with Spider-Man were really really great and it was also pretty emotional despite the fact that this movie is really really bad it's a huge guilty pleasure for me and for one big reason bully maguire watching toby be a dick to everybody for like 30 straight minutes is just so fun to watch. Coming in at number eight is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Once again, studio interference rears its ugly head. Villains Rhino, Electro, and Goblin are all types of effed up. The continued storyline about Peter's parents and the shoehorning of the Sinister Six are just one huge head slapper. Okay, I deserve that. Despite that, this movie has grown on me immensely throughout the years. Uh, the more I watch it, the more I seem to enjoy it. I just kind of ignore all the bad stuff, put it to the side, and enjoy the story for what it is. And uh, I really enjoy like the fights between like Peter and, and Electro and, and, and even Goblin at the end. This could have been you know, a, a major player in this list. At number seven is Spider-Man 2. What the f No! 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 Boo this man! No! Yes. Most people have this as their number one. A lot of people consider this movie to be like, you know, the greatest of all time of comic book movies. It's up there. I, I don't see it that way. I just, that's just not, I, I've never really been that big on it. Um, I do love, you know, the really comic accurate Doc Ock. I love his entire storyline. I love all that stuff. I, I find the rest of the movie kind of boring. 
I, I have a, a, a laundry list of issues with it, but I'm not going to get into all that stuff. It would, it would really ruin this, you know, this ranking. So I'm just going to mention my biggest problem with this movie. My biggest problem with this movie is Spider-Man having Spider-ED. Something on your mind, son? Actually, yeah. I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but lately I've been having a little trouble uh, performing. Come on, man. Like, what? why is this in this movie? Coming in at number six is The Amazing Spider-Man, or as I like to call it, Spider-Man Begins. This really took, like, a lot from Batman Begins, which was, like, the big movie at that time. It has a darker tone. It has an edgier skater punk version of Peter played by Andrew Garfield. What really works is like the inclusion of Gwen Stacy, which if you guys didn't know, um, Gwen Stacy was actually in the comics, the girl that dated Peter first. Peter dated Gwen. Harry dated MJ at that time. It was kind of like a like a Betty and Veronica with Jughead and, and Archie kind of, you know, 60s teen drama kind of thing. I'm glad that they put her in and they definitely have that chemistry which led to them dating in real life. So that was nice. What doesn't work in this movie is two things. Um, this whole big side story about Peter Parker's parents. Guess what, Sony? Nobody cares. The other thing is the look of the lizard. I thought his body and everything, CGI, was fine. But his face, ugh. Sony, what were you thinking? Coming in at number five is Spider-Man Homecoming. The MCU slash John Hughes teen comedy slash Spider-Man mashup. It has a great villain in the Vulture. Um, a perfect Spider-Man in Tom Holland who actually looks like a teenager. You know, they finally got somebody a little younger who can play more of a teen Spider-Man. And, and that's what fans were really missing all, the, all those years. I, I, I always did have a problem, and I still do, with this whole, you know, MC version of Spider-Man with, like, Spider-Man being, like, Iron Man's bitch. I, I, I just, you know, he's, he's Spider-Man, like... Understand in the comics, Iron Man is like a B-level hero. Spider-Man is Marvel. I will say the biggest surprise for me was Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. I, I, I thought that was so weird going into seeing the movie. And um, honestly, uh, I never realized that I needed that in my life. Coming in at number four is Spider-Man. No, there's no the, there's no amazing. Just the original OG Spider-Man. It's still the quintessential Peter Parker origin story. I love origin stories. Um, it's so historically significant for the evolution of the comic book movie. It's one of the ones that really kicked things off. It's a little bit more dated now, and, and I think that it has three major flaws, but I still love this movie. Its flaws are, uh, for me, and these are just flaws for me, the Green Goblin's Power Ranger type mech outfit just looks so stupid. And when you, you know, when you look at all the high school scenes, everybody looks like they're 30 something years old. Like they have like these 30 something year old actors playing teenagers. And I, I can't, I can't not see that. And number three, because everybody looked like they, they, they were grown ass men and women, they really, they fast-tracked all the high school stuff from the Spider-Man story. And, like, pretty much, like, by the middle of the movie, he's, they're graduated. He's, in, they're in college now. They're working. And I just, I just felt like we lost something there. Coming in at number three is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This gives us a Miles Morales origin story that's even better than the one in the comics. And honestly, this is just a beautiful animated style movie that takes animation in a different, you know, way and style that we've never seen. You know, you have like almost comic book animations added to 
CGI slash hand drawn animation. It's just, it's just gorgeous. I love everything about it. The alternate reality thing. You've got all these different versions of Spider Man all combining to form a spider team with with ridiculous characters that you just fall in love with, you know, Spider Pig, Spider Gwen, you know, you name it, Spider Noir. I could talk to about this movie at nauseum. It's it's that fun. And my runner up is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, the Empire Strikes Back of the Spider Verse trilogy, soon to be finished at the end of this year, I hope. Just like Empire, it's darker, it's more character-based, it has huge reveals, and it leaves you wanting more. And I really didn't speak about this in my recent review. It took the animation, which was so beautiful from the, the previous installment, and it took it to even higher levels, which really has it in this discussion for, you know, greatest animated movie. It really is in that discussion. Greatest comic book movie, I don't know, but it's it's definitely you could you could make the argument. All in all, it was a great theater experience. It's a fantastic movie. And if you really want more details, look at my recent review. And my number one Spider-Man movie of all time is Spider-Man No Way Home. The all-you-can-eat buffet of Spider-Man movie characters. I mean, this this has characters ranging ranging from three different versions of Spider-Man. It's fantastic. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit you, the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie, all leading up to like when Doc Ock shows up, it's trash. It's terrible. I, I, I sat in the theater the first time thinking, oh my God, they ruined, they ruined Spider-Man again. And then everything after that was pure bliss. I mean, we're talking a fantastic surprising origin story after so many times we've seen this version of spider-man we finally got to see an origin story for for tom holland spider-man it was so good and and these these other spider-men and their villains these weren't just side characters these were fully fleshed out characters who were, were integral to this story is it a ton of fan service yeah and and guess what I'm a fan, and I like to be serviced. <sighs> In closing, um, I got so much more coming to you guys. You're looking for me on Instagram, I'm at just a guy from Brooklyn, three twenty one, and from the city that never sleeps, from the BK. Seems I got a pocket full of dreams, baby, I'm from New York.